JJ, something the matter? Are you all right? No, Ralph, I am not all right. It is 9.15. You are 15 minutes late. Sorry about that. Contemplate system on the ring road. Oh, give excuse, Ralph, but it won't do. We're being watched. Watched? I've had a directive from the chairman himself, who feels, not unnaturally, that uh, since we are being paid from 9 o'clock, we should make every effort to be here by that time. I don't think that's unreasonable to you. No. Directive, that explains it. What? Well, you don't usually come in before 10. <laughs> I'm a chief executive. My hours are flexible. Yours are not. Well, I'm usually here on time, JJ. Yes, yes, I fully appreciate that. What about the others? Well, if they are late, they usually have a reasonable excuse. Oh, yes, I've heard their excuses full of colour and human interest. In fact, you could submit Harvey's excuses for the Booker Prize. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't deal in fiction here. We deal in figures. What are we going to do, JJ? Well, for the moment, we are going to wait. Wait? For our first wandering boy, who, though he lives only two streets away, is still dragging his weary body into the building. The rest <laughs> to <laughs> Morning, JJ. You're early? No, Harvey, you are late. Am I? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Contraflow system on the ring road. <laughs> Harvey, you only live two streets away. You don't use the ring road. I'm not normally, no, but unfortunately I've been involved in a mercy dash. Mercy, Dad. Yes, I went to the car this morning. There was a man lying on the pavement clutching his stomach. He looked terrible. I mean, all he could say was, take me to the nearest hospital. So I put him in the car, set off down the ring road. What do I find? Contraflow system. Exactly. <laughs> so I went, vroom, straight down the hard shoulder, all the way to the hospital. And where you in time? Oh, thankfully, they? yes, yes. I mean, I'd have been here sooner, but he... Poor devil wouldn't let go of my hand. <laughs> he said, what's your name? And I said, Harvey. And he said, stay with me, Harvey. <laughs> and then the anaesthetic took effect and I was able to get away. Yes, you know, that reminds me of a similar incident last year when you delivered a baby in the back of your car. <laughs> Didn't the mother want to name the baby after you? Yes. These things are always happening to me. Not anymore, they are not. <laughs> what? to be in England. <laughs> now that April's here, for whoever wakes in England sees some morning unaware that the lowest boughs and the brushwood sheaf round the elm tree bowl are in tiny leaf and the chaffinch sings on the orchard bough. In England, now... <laughs> First the good, then the bad, and finally the ugly. <laughs> You're late, Osborne. I know, Mr Morley. I won't bore you with the details. Oh, I implore you, Osborne. Bore me with the detail. Well, there was a contraflow system on the ring road. <laughs> uh, then I had to stop off and buy some bananas. Bananas? Why? Doctor's orders. I'm suffering from a potassium deficiency. Uh, and how does that manifest itself, Osborne? Muscular pains and mental apathy. Well, I can certainly vouch for the latter. <laughs> Perhaps you should feed them to the rest of the staff. This department has the worst record for punctuality in the building. 9.30 before everyone's arrived. Uh, not everyone, JJ. What? Norma isn't here yet. Oh, well, I believe she has domestic problems, Ralph. Well, that's no excuse. Hey, here she is, Ralph. Well, just leave this to me, JJ. <laughs> Norma, you are late. Uh, not really. I was here at nine, but I couldn't come in. Why not? I was being followed. Who by? My ex-boyfriend. Look, I don't want to go through that again. Of course not. She doesn't want to go through that again, Ralph. <laughs> I don't want him finding out where I work. It's bad enough he knows where I live. He came round last night and headbutted my front door. <laughs> and I didn't want him coming in here and taking a swing at someone. Of course not. You didn't want him coming in here and taking a swing at somebody, Ralph. Your love life is no concern of ours, Norma. Isn't that right, JJ? Uh, right, Ralph. But uh, as it happens, I have uh, a solution to the problem. I have prepared this book. When you arrive, you will sign in. And at 9.15, a red line will be drawn. What's the red line mean, Mr Morley? Trouble, Osborne. <laughs> Anyone whose name appears below the red line will receive a warning. Anyone whose name appears more than three times within a given period will be subjected to severe disciplinary action. Um, who's going to draw the red line, JJ? 
Ralph, since he's the most punctual, the most dependable here, he'll keep the book. Thanks, JJ. Norma. Well, that's a relief. How do you mean? Oh, we could have been in trouble there. Now all you have to do is wait for us all to get in, then draw the red line. You mean falsify the record? Mm, that's right. Well, I couldn't do that, Harvey. Why not? Well, it's a matter of trust. But, Ralph, I can't guarantee to be here by 9.15. Oh, why not? You only live two streets away. Well, that's the trouble. I live too close. You see, if you're late, you can hurry and make it up. If I'm late, that's it. I'm late. <laughs> No, sorry, I don't follow the logic of that, Harvey. Well, supposing, supposing I find a man lying on the pavement, clutching his stomach. I suggest you step over him. <laughs> you know you could be so heartless. Hey, well, 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 Ralph, Ralph, what about me? Hey, I mean, suppose I get in 20 minutes early. Are you going to put that in the book? No. No, nobody ever says, well done, Osborne. Nobody ever says, take 20 minutes off, Osborne. Nobody ever says, we will pay you for that 20 minutes, Osborne. Why not? Because you've never been 20 minutes early. <laughs> The chairman feels, not unnaturally, that since we are being paid from nine o'clock, we should make every effort to be here by that time. I don't think that's unreasonable, do you? What are you doing, Ralph? Starting the book. This is how fascism started. <laughs> Take no notice. I've seen him like this before when he was milk monitor. I am about <laughs> to draw the red line. What's this? A classic bedroom design with an air of old-world refinement to recapture the warmth of summer evenings with the golden glow of cherry. Not the paper. Thanks, bit of a hurry. Blitz on timekeeping. Create a peaceful, almost rural atmosphere with this charming bedroom design. Note the fine scroll work and delicate mouldings. <clears throat> Tea? Oh, yes, thanks. Is there a mat? Oh, yes. <laughs> A traditional bedroom design redolent of English country houses at their most distinguished. You can stop leaving these brochures around. We are not buying a bedroom suite. But we've got Mum and Dad coming at the weekend and we need a new suite. Oh, yes, redolent of English country houses at their most distinguished. You must be joking. Besides, there's nothing wrong with that bedroom. It collapsed last time they came. Well, if two overweight people indulge in certain practices... <laughs> they did not indulge in certain practices. <laughs> That bed collapsed because it was old. That bed was made by the craftsman of Evesham. Yes, and the model they made before that was a four-poster. <laughs> also, it has a spring coming up that would take a leg off. All right, well, maybe the bed has to go. And the wardrobe. You see, I agree to one thing and it leads to another. Ralph, that wardrobe leans two foot to the right. And it's not an optical illusion. Hang one more heavy sweater in there and it'll go the same way as the bed. All right, we'll look at a wardrobe. And dressing table. <laughs> You see how our expenditure's growing? What is wrong with the dressing table? The mirror's gone. Every time we look at it, we appear to be covered in rust. <laughs> You're an important man, Ralph. You deserve a good reflection. <laughs> you haven't seen yourself properly in years. Well, I don't know. Why are you always like this when you have to spend a large sum of money? Probably because I haven't got a large sum of money to spend. Dad said he'd help out. You mean charity? We don't need charity, Ross. Of course we do. I don't know anyone else who needs charity more than we do. I prefer to buy my own bedroom furniture. I have been thinking of a waterbed. <laughs> a waterbed? You? Why not? They're very comfortable. You couldn't sleep on water, Ralph. You were sick on the cross-channel ferry. <laughs> oh, why do you always do this? Do what? Come up with something grandiose so we finish up doing nothing at all. All I'm saying is it needs thinking about. Now, I had been thinking of redesigning all the bedrooms and going up into the roof. Oh, why don't you go up there now? <clears throat> Well done, Norma. <laughs> Am I in time, Ralph? Just... <clears throat> Congratulations, Osborne. You've done it again. I bang my head seven times on the pillow. <laughs> Seems to work. It's willpower, Ralph. Osborne? Yeah? You've still got your slippers on. <laughs> right. Hold it, Ralph. You're late. I took a shortcut through the park. Then you should have been early. No, there was this girl standing on the bridge, staring into the water. <laughs> Tears in her eyes. I mean, something was wrong, Ralph. I thought she was going to jump. The water's only two feet deep, Harvey. <laughs> Broken marriage. Failed romance. Poltax. 
I mean, I'll never know, but I couldn't just walk by, so I stopped and I talked to her. And I told her that life was a gift, that it was for living, that there would be good times again. She smiled. She took my hand. Did she ask you your name? <laughs> yeah, she did, as a matter of fact. What's your name, she said, and I said, Harvey. And she said, I'll remember you, Harvey. <laughs> well, what was I supposed to do? Next time I'd give her a push, it'd be quicker. Well, you're not going to draw that line. Yes. But it's the second time this week. That's right. And what was it yesterday? A mysterious object under your car. A mysterious cylindrical object. Which turned out to be a can of export lager. <laughs> I have to be careful. Why do you have to be careful? Animal lib. Grace is wearing a genuine red fox. If the red fox is genuine, it's the only thing about your story that is. Right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I told you not to come to the office. It's lunchtime. It's 2.30. I'm working. Well, so am I. Bargain hunting. Oh, no. <laughs> How's this for an incredible coincidence? Kimberly's sale, divan bed, last word in luxury with, wait for it, three layers of posture springing. <laughs> well, just think of it. Not one, not two, but three layers of posture springing. Well, who needs three layers of posture springing? You do. You spend more time in bed than most people. <laughs> and your posture's not good. And not only that, it has a matching wardrobe and dressing table at a knockdown price. I am not interested. 30% reduction. 30%? Mm. While stocks last. It is tempting. But of course it's tempting. Lots of shelf space for shirts and sweaters. You'll be able to colour coordinate all your things. Colour coordinate? <laughs> so I'll see you at Kimberley's about three. Ross, I can't get out. You mean you're not important enough to take a few minutes off? Well, I didn't say that. If you're not important enough, Ralph, it's because you've never been colour coordinated. Well, of course I'm important enough. Good. I'll see you at Kimberley's about three o'clock. And don't forget your chequebook. <sighs> well, I'm glad to see somebody's working hard. Yes, dear Jane. What's this? Divan beds, last word in luxury. Perhaps we should get some for the rest of the staff. <laughs> Where are they? I think they're taking a late lunch, JJ. No, they're not. They left at 12 o'clock. I think they were going by the stores department on the way. <laughs> stores department? How can you be so gullible? Not only do we have trouble getting them here on time, we have even more difficulty retaining their services once they've arrived. They've had a two and a half hour lunch break. Good heavens, are they? <laughs> at the Wigan Mitre, no doubt. <laughs> and you know what's going to happen? They're going to come through that door walking backwards trying to give the impression they're leaving. <laughs> Brandishing sheafs of paper and smelling of peppermints. Ah, I hear their fairy footsteps now. <laughs> we should have had these figures a week oh, it's ago. total inefficiency. Yeah, of course. Did you notice there was hardly anybody there? Well, there's absenteeism. This company is red. Hello, <laughs> JJ. Like a peppermint. <laughs> Where have you been? And don't say the sales department, because I checked ten minutes ago. And don't say purchasing the stores, because I checked there too. You're late. Well, of course we're late. You don't have to tell us we're late. Everyone's late. Bus strike, city centre. <laughs> bus strike? City centre? But, but the buses are running, Harvey. Well, they are now. Lightning strike, maximum disruption, hundred stranded. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Mm. I wouldn't mind, but you drove straight by us. <laughs> I didn't see you. You sure? Of course I'm sure. But I waved. In times like this, we should help each other. But I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Well, if you didn't see us, you didn't see us. There's no need to apologize. <laughs> Ralph, draw another column in the book and head it Quo Vardis. Quo Vardis? Yes, Osborne. You've had a classical education. What does Quo Vardis mean? Whither goest thou? And whither goest thou, Osborne? I'll tell you whither thou goest. Thou goest with thy brother Harvey to the Wigan Mitre. <laughs> and there thou dost regale thyself even unto the third pint. <laughs> and if things don't improve, there'll be a weeping and a wailing and a gnashing of teeth in the ranks of the ungodly. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Mr. Morley. That means anyone who slips out this afternoon's for it. <laughs> What do you think, Ralph? Oh, 
Seems all right. All right? <laughs> well, this is our particular favourite, sir. That's why it's in the window. I shall be sorry to see it go. It hasn't gone yet. <laughs> yeah, it was very much in demand, sir. If it's in demand, why has it been reduced? Ah, well, it's what we call a loss leader, sir. It brings people into the shop. It's a wonderful bargain. If it's a wonderful bargain, why hasn't it been sold? Because uh, we didn't wish to empty the window, sir. He's bringing so many people in. Could have been reserved. <laughs> what? My husband's an accountant. I, well, it takes an accountant to ask a question like that. Yes. Um, well, I'll be frank with you, sir. We normally direct people away from the window, but, uh, well, you've been too persistent. Uh, you are clearly and obviously a discerning young couple who fully appreciate the special qualities of this particular suite. Are we? Well, you obviously have an eye for a bargain, sir. <laughs> you don't have to tell me he's an accountant. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you this. Um, without a word of a lie, <clears throat> we had an insomniac in here the other day. He was, he was looking at uh, this very same model. And, you know, he hadn't had a night's sleep for 25 years. <laughs> I asked him, I asked him to lie on the bed and he fell asleep while I was writing out the invoice. I don't believe it. <laughs> well, try it, sir. What? Well, just, don't worry about kicking off his shoes, but just feel that suspension. Go on. That's comfortable, isn't it? Yes. Bounce up and down. What? Bounce up and down, feel the resilience. <laughs> you too, madam. Pardon? <laughs> Feel that spring. Oh, you'll you'll be amazed. You'll put up with any amount of punishment. Well, I... Go on, don't be shy. You'll love it. Just clings to the contours. <laughs> Absolute bliss. Uh, now, lie back. Lie back. <laughs> Good. Well done. And bounce up and down. There we are. Bounce up and down. 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 Yes. Um, excuse me. May I? Yeah. You, see, you see what I mean? I mean now, even with three in a bed, it still retains its original resilience. <laughs> this bed will last you a lifetime. <laughs> You'll probably die in this bed. <laughs> what? We'll think about it. Yeah, I'll leave you to ponder. Yeah, no, 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 don't get up. I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> What do you think, Ralph? Well, I feel ridiculous lying in bed in the middle of the high street. I'm supposed to be at work. Well, it's just the only way to test it, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph? Ralph, what happened? I thought I saw Morley. Where? Outside the window. Oh! You've got Morley on the brain, Ralph. Or are you just trying to get out of spending money? I have to be careful, Roz. Look at this mirror, Ralph. You look really good in this mirror, Ralph. Do I? Mm. See, that's the thing about mirrors. They either like you or they hate you. And this mirror really likes you. You look really good, Ralph. Do I really? I think it's tinted. I'd look at the space in the wardrobe. You could, you could live in this wardrobe, Ralph. Hello, Roz. Mr. Morley. I see you're admiring my little purchase. Your little purchase? But we... I'm considering it. Oh, but it's a sale, Roz. I'm afraid it's first come, first served. I said I'd take it. I am so sorry, sir. I'm covered in embarrassment. The, the lady was considering it. Oh. Well, have you made up your mind, Roz? Only I'm in a bit of a hurry. It's uh, just the thing I need for my guest bedroom. Of course, sir. Uh, do you intend to take it, madam? Um... Do I intend to take it? Take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh. Well, that will be um, that'll be either cash or cheque, madam. As is a sale, we do require immediate payment. Cheque, of course. Now, where did I put my chequebook? Ah, oh, here it is. I'll make out the invoice, madam. I'm sorry you're disappointed, Mr. Morley. Oh, not really, Roz. Now I look closer, it isn't uh, quite what I wanted. A little uh, garish for my taste. Good afternoon, Ross. Afternoon. I'll see you back in the office, Ralph. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. 
OK, yeah, look, I'll tell him. OK. Right. You're not going to draw that line, Ralph? Yes. Harvey's just phoned. I thought he might. What is it this time? Well, he was on his way to work when he passed his house and he saw smoke. <laughs> I think I know this one. Is this the one where he rescues the old lady? Yes. I thought so. Actually, he's rescued two old ladies. <laughs> two? He doesn't know where to stop, does he? He saw this smoke, so he telephoned the emergency services on his car phone. And then he broke in, he ran upstairs, and he rescued these two old ladies who'd been overcome by the fumes. And then he stayed and he fought the blaze till the fire brigade arrived. And now he's gone to casualty for a checkup, and he says, uh, he says he won't be very long and he doesn't want any fuss. I bet he doesn't. <laughs> you don't believe any of this, do you, Osborne? No. Neither do I. <laughs> I mean, that's not the point. Ralph, you can't draw that line. Why not? Well, because he's your friend. We've got a moral dilemma here. No, we haven't. The company pays me to draw a line at quarter past nine, and that's what I'm going to do, and he'd do the same. You've got to look after number one, Osborne, and I'm in enough trouble as it is. But that's the third time this week. They'll sack him. Well, we don't know that. Well, they said severe disciplinary action. You can't take that risk. If you draw that line, you'll never forgive yourself. Now, you're not that sort of person, Ralph. You can't do... <laughs> You've done it. What? I never thought... I thought I knew you better than that. I've... You've left a space. <laughs> I know. And now I'm committing forgery. Yeah, this is Harvey's backwards slope, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and two pence. Sure. Have you uh, finished with the book, Ralph? Uh, yes, JJ, yes. Oh, I see Harvey's signed in. Yes. No, he's made it at last. I must congratulate him. Where is he? <laughs> uh, where is he, Osborne? Oh, uh, well, I, don't, I don't know. He was, he was here a minute ago. Have you heard about Harvey? He's just been interviewed on local radio. He's a hero. <laughs> rescued two old ladies from a fire. He was talking from the casualty department. And he was so modest. That'll be the newspapers. Isn't it exciting? What a busy morning he's having. 